be in order and call on Councilor Watson. It was a pleasure. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Call the roll. Councilor Watson. Here. Councilor Martin. Here. Councilor Brown. Here. Councilor Jennings. Here. Councilor Brown. Here. Mayor Lovers. Here. We have a quorum to do this. Approval of the January 22nd, 2024 regular meeting minutes. Motion to approve the regular meeting minutes of January the 22nd, 2024. Second. Yes. Councilor Martin? Yes. Councilor Brown? Yes. Councilor Jennings? Yes. Councilor Brown? Yes. The minutes for January 22nd, 2024 are approved. Next item on the agenda is a public hearing to consider a liquor license for the country gym, Bruton, Alabama. So I'll call a public hearing to order. Is there anyone here that would like to speak against us approving this license? Is there anyone here that would like for us uh, that wants to speak in favor? Hearing none, public hearing is closed. Under new business, the first item is to approve the January 2024 accounts payable. Motion to approve January 2024 accounts payable. A second. Yes. Councilor Martin? Yes. Councilor Brown? Yes. Councilor Jennings? Yes. Councilor Brown? Yes. The accounts payable for January 2024 is approved. Next item is to approve a liquor license for the country GM, Bruton, Alabama, resolution 24-0212-1, and I call on the city clerk. I have a motion to approve resolution 24-0212-1. Second. I have a motion by Councilor Brown, a second by Councilor Jennings to approve resolution 24-0212-1. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, Councilor Watson? Yes. Councilor Barton? Yes. Councilor Brown? Yes. Councilor Jennings? Yes. Councilor Brown? Yes. Uh, the next item is a report from Hal Whitman, who is the president of the Greater Bruton Chamber of Commerce. Give us an update. Thank you all for having me today. I want to give you a little rundown of what we got going on this year. Uh, we'll start the year off next month with our chamber banquet, which will be held at the Hourglass. That'll be on March the 5th. After that, April 21st is Kick It at the Creek. Uh, it'll go from 2 to 5 p.m. at Jennings Park. We are monitoring prices right now on crawfish. They've got to be a little high, but we're going to figure it out somehow. Uh, then our big one, June 15th, will be the Alabama Blueberry Festival, obviously at Jennings Park again. It'll run from 8 until 3. On August 15th, our Chamber Golf Tournament will be out here at the Country Club of Bruton. Starts at 1 o'clock. October 4th and 5th is our annual rodeo, and we are, we've already locked down a specialty act for this year. The same uh, people are coming with the stock and all, so that's already in the works, and uh, hopefully have a, another great rodeo as we had last year. And November 9th, we have Porch Fest, which is off Belleville and Scambia Avenue. Uh, we have booked a Basically the same guys last year. Last year he come in and done Prince. This year he will come in and do a Michael Jackson tribute show. So that's what we've got going on for that. Our holiday kickoff will start November the 21st. December 13th will be our Christmas parade. And we'll start.
start for next year. And I do, I want to thank all y'all, the mayor, the councils, everybody who works for the city. I can't tell y'all, I've been doing this for a lot of years, um, how easy it makes things when we have people that will stand behind us and help us and put on the events. And I, I can tell you, I've never had nobody from the city say, we can't do that. It's always, let me see how to get it done. And that, that goes a long ways. And like I said, everybody has been more than helpful through the years. And I hope to continue that tradition and keep putting on some great events for the city here. So. Well, I'll just say that the chamber has done an outstanding job to be able to put on that many events. And as hard working as you have been, and you personally have put in yeoman hours over yeah. the years. And, so that's very much appreciated. I have heard a rumor that you're going to do the participate in the bull riding at the rodeo. So uh, I guess we'll just wait for the rodeo to see. Come see, okay. Let <laughs> 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 uh, get the uh, is there Any questions of anything we have going on? Can, can we have a printout of the upcoming events? Yes, ma'am. I'll go get you one and bring it back in here. Sure will. Sure okay. will. But yeah, we're looking for a big year. I hope okay. we'll Hopefully the weather will cooperate this year. We had one little mix up last year, but you know, when you deal with outside events, weather's just part of it. So, but we are, with the Blueberry Festival, one thing we're looking into is kind of an alternative site, so to speak, I guess, where if the park is not, like last year, it was no way to have it at the park, but we would like to have somewhere we could offer vendors because a lot of people have spent a lot of money getting ready for the blueberry festival so maybe an alternate place to at least tell them hey it might be bad weather but you can go set up and sell what you want to or something to that nature mm -hmm. so if somebody asked that is something we're trying to offer for this coming year thank you very much thank y'all mm -hmm. that's a good idea the next Thing is a mayoral appointment uh, on the city of Bruton zoning board, and I appoint, uh, reappoint Meredith Buck. Who? Uh, Meredith. Meredith. Buck. Okay. 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 Uh, the next item is a point of uh, city of Bruton planning commission board member, and I reappoint Josh Godwin. The next is to appoint a nominating committee for the industrial development board. I ask Councilor Barton, Councilor Jennings, Councilor Broughton to serve on that committee. I appoint a nominating committee for the Water Works Board, and I ask Councilor Brown, Councilor Jennings, and Councilor Barton to serve on that committee. And next, and I'm going to introduce him to anybody that doesn't know Jim Byard. Uh, he works as a consultant for a lot of cities across the state. Uh, it's my privilege to introduce him, uh, and he's going to give us some insight on rural populations and uh, the link to that, to housing and uh, quality of life events, like, just like we heard from the council, uh, from the chamber just then. Jim spent 12 years as the mayor of Prattville, Alabama, in a time of growth and prosperity for that city. The population of that city, by the way, has almost doubled from 20,000 in 1990 to more than 38,000. He spent six years as the director of the Alabama Department of Economic and Community Affairs, ADECA. He is currently very active in helping, helping cities and counties all over the state in economic development. He serves on the Main Street Alabama Board of Directors, the Alabama Communities of Excellence, and Design Alabama, and Your Town Alabama Board. So I'll ask Jim Byron. Good to be back with y'all. Um, I appreciate the opportunity to work alongside you for the betterment of Bruton. And as I said a few minutes ago, I grew up at, uh, in, I felt like I grew up at a city hall. Uh, I was elected to the council when I was 23, so I, I feel like I believe local government and I understand some of the pressures that you guys face and some of the opportunities that you guys face and some of the challenges you guys face. Uh, as we were talking about the Alabama Reflector in 20, January of this year, um, last month, had an article about rural Alabama and population decline. And it looked at the decade from 2010 to 2020, Escambia County's population declined by 4%. Um, 
you guys know that you rely on sales tax dollars, you rely on uh, property tax dollars to run the community. And citizens who are calling to ask about garbage collection or uh, potholes, you know, they expect you to respond and you respond with sales tax dollars in the budget and you have to have those sales tax dollars so you have to have citizens with a lower tax base you know that infrastructure supporting infrastructure is just not sustainable so the mayor and I were discussing that and discussing how you can change that that study looked at Alabama's Black Belt and a lot of rural communities and a lot of those spaces and places do not have some of the opportunities that Bruton has you are known across the state as a, a community that gets things done. The Provalis announcement a year or so ago, uh, that caused waves across, especially rural Alabama economic development. There are mayors um, who would do a lot, maybe mortgage a child to have a development like that and the capital expenditure um, in their downtown area that would bring 300 employees to their downtown. Um, that's important and that's something that I think you have an opportunity to leverage. Your school system is known wide and far as a, as a above average school system, a city school system. Your education, your, you have the opportunity. Your downtown is still viable and vibrant and you have, um, you know, the chamber just discussed the amenities that, that are going on in your town and in your downtown area. You have E.O. Wilson Park, you have Jennings Park, you have a lot of opportunity and I think it's incumbent on you guys to really put your heads together and think creatively, think aspirationally, think inspirationally and figure out um, how you can, the, the one thing you're lacking, and you know this, I'm not, I'm not telling you anything you don't know, the one thing you're lacking is some housing offerings. Uh, you know, the missing middle. That's across our nation, it's across our state, it's obviously a, a situation here in Bruton. Uh, you think about a fireman and a, and a school teacher that are married and are trying to figure out where they're gonna live. Um, do they have opportunities here? Do, do folks who are working at Provalis who are looking for a market rate, rate house in the $175,000 to $225,000 range, do they have a, do, are their homes available for them to live? If they're not, then I think there are opportunities that you have and you have, you've met the challenge partially because you've hired Chad Chancellor in the next move group to do a study for you. Then you hire Matt Level and Ben Wiesman, the University of Alabama, to come down and study Dogwood Hills, which is a piece of property you, know, you own, and you all have a lot more intimate knowledge of that area. But um, if you look around the state, housing is something that's missing in a lot of communities. And you have all of the bones um, for a great community. You have a great community. But when folks are coming here to work in the industrial, in the economic development opportunities and successes you've had, they have to have a place to live. Uh, retail follows rooftops. Um, you know, you need some rooftops. I think, Mayor, that's, that's what I would say. That, I think that would help. And you guys, if you look at that reflector report, it's pretty, um, it, it's pretty negative to, on a lot of communities, but you guys, check the box on several items that a lot of those communities don't have. And truly, um, the Provalis announcement and their um, operation in downtown Bruton is, that's, that's very valuable, very valuable across the state. I'd be more than happy to answer any questions if you have comments. Well, since you spoke to us earlier, I, I think we can answer them, but I certainly appreciate you coming down today. And Thank uh, you, Mayor. hope you have a safe drive. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. In the meetings, Joe.